Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle episode. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director of Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And today I am joined by Kirk Dunn, the CEO of Event Store, for a conversation about data platforms, how they're creating value for the enterprise, and what's ahead on that front. Kirk, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you, Shelley. Nice to be with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Kirk, I know that you are no stranger to the tech world. You're an entrepreneur, investor, board member, philanthropist, and I know that I've really just scratched the tip of the iceberg on all of those things that you've done and that you do, and and you've led companies to success before, and now in some big news that just was announced this last week, you're back at it with Event Store, stepping into the CEO role. Congratulations on that. Thank you very much. It's fun to be back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So walk me through, if you would, a little of that career backstory of yours. And 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 then, you know, of course, I want you to share what it was about this opportunity with Event Store that enticed you back into the fray. Yeah, that's a good question. So I spent my uh, early years as an engineer and then very quickly figured out that the exciting parts was getting closer to the customer. So yeah. made a move into marketing and sales. And then, of course, the career went from there. I've done everything from telecom companies to internet software to storage to security. And uh, ultimately, I think it's safe to say that data is the new gold or data is the new tofu or data is the new black. <laughs> and during my time at Cloudera, uh, it never became more true that uh, that platform and that opportunity opened up all sorts of things for enterprises to be able to do they were never able to do. For example, your ability to blend um, uh, you know, dynamic data with static data. So that was a super fun time. And then uh, after leaving there, I was investing and advising specifically in the data analytics area, mostly a little bit of security as well. And then in my travels, I got to know the investors at Event Store that I sat on a board with and I started helping the company. As I looked under the hood, I realized that Event Store was actually tackling a, uh, an age old issue with the operational database and realizing that the operational database was built to store data. But the truth of it is an enterprise is really about the events of the enterprise. Somebody yeah. walks into a store, they pick up a product, they pick up another product and they check out with a third product or, or what have you. And that story of how a business runs is a series of events and event store is a product that actually for lack of a better way to say it, is an append-only log that tracks every bit of the activity that goes on, thus, event store. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I know that some of the news this week included the fact that you are reteaming with David Wang, who's stepping into the VP of engineering role. I love this line from the press release that I saw on this. Dunn and Wang rejoined forces to give businesses the how and why of their data, not just the what. So talk with me a little bit about yeah. how you are, how excited you are about rejoining forces with him. Well, it's, it's been good. David and I spent uh, years together at uh, Cloudera and he ran one of the key teams, the HBase team, which is the which is effectively where the data would, would reside in, in our platform. Uh, he then went on to go build the team at Red Panda. And so you take two disciplines that become very important in data platforms. One is the origination of data and the storage of it, a la database. And the second is how you actually move that data in a streaming platform. So what's key to what we're doing is we believe that, as we all know, data has to originate somewhere. And that's what a big portion of what we do is. And at the same time, if you just leave it there, then you're just storing it. You're not doing anything significant with it. We know that data that gets created needs to be used for downstream applications, analytic applications, training AI models, et cetera. So key to originating data is moving it. And yeah. so the streaming part becomes a very, very important part of what we think the future of data platforms look like. So David comes with a great skill set across both those domains. Yeah, absolutely. So we um, spend a lot of time talking about data platforms around here and the massive shift that we're seeing as enterprises, you know, of course, realize the importance of data, the role data platforms play, and then finding efficient ways to manage and access and utilize data, especially in real time. And all of these things together, of course, business mission critical. I know that I'm preaching to the choir here. So what is it you see happening in the industry on this front? And, and share with me your thoughts on, on why data platforms are just so critically important today. Mm -hmm. 
well, you know, it wasn't that long ago earlier in my career when, you know, the data platform was a big mystery. Yeah. And now today, the data is the is the fuel of a business. Yeah. Their ability at businesses, whether you're a transportation company, an entertainment company, an oil and gas company, financial services, your ability to get to that data, not just get to it, but get to it in a timely manner. And I, I kind of don't like the term, the real-time enterprise, it's a bit overused, yeah. but I think it's a good one to explain. You originate data somewhere, but... Again, you, what are you doing with that data? How are you using it to better your yeah. approach to your customers, understand inventory better uh, in a manufacturing environment, understand how uh, product life cycle works, et cetera. And so what we're all about is getting the data at origination and making sure it gets to the downstream applications. Yeah. You think about the way a database was invented. Basically, it's a storage device. So you you write data and effectively, and you mentioned this earlier, getting to the why and the how and the yeah. when. So the what is a storage element. It's you've stored a bit of data. Why did it get created? How did it get created? Is it related to other elements? And what Event Store is all about is exposing the how, why, when to the what so that you can really understand what that data means to your organization and then use it in other ways as you would choose. You know, that makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, in this age of AI, um, you know, you've said you said a couple of things that, you know, some phrases that we use often in the industry, you know, data is the new gold, data is yeah. the lifeblood of every business. And, you know, like you, sometimes I, I grow weary of saying the same things over and over again. But the reality of it is, is that that's very true and, and never more so mm -hmm. than now in an age of AI. And, you know, I did some research um, publicly published a study recently on the state of data management. And um, I thought it was interesting, you know, everyone, 87% of the respondents to, to my survey indicated they plan on implementing AI in the next 12 months. And that probably is not, oh, we've never used AI before, but it's really a more advanced evolution of AI. But that mm -hmm. said, the primary challenges that they shared, they face are, you know, organizing unstructured data for machine learning, organized unstructured data for, actually organized structured data for machine yeah. learning, organizing unstructured data for RAG and, and, you know, the reality of it is, and this is why we keep having so many conversations about data and data management. And I think why event store, what you're doing is so relevant is that we can't have AI success without alignment here on the data management front. And, mm -hmm. you know, data volume plays a, an outsized role and all of these things kind of factor together to, I think we're at this moment where these kind of solutions are incredibly important. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, the line I love is data is the new tofu. And that was one of <laughs> my, uh, we used to put out these t-shirts at Cloudera and we would yeah. always try to invent the new. Be the silly. New yeah, but what, what you're describing uh, is interesting because if you think about, and there's so much more that you can do with data than just AI, but if you think oh, about sure. the principal issue of AI, what is it? It's learning. Yeah. And so how, how are the models that we've built learning? Well, you would have to ask yourself, well, where's the source of that data that those models are learning on? Yeah. Well, it's being generated at the origin of where data is generated at the operational database. So if you have an inventory application or a sales application or any other kind of application, you're generating data at source. So the question is, are you storing that data and it's just sitting there in its classic rows and columns or in its graph or in, it, or in some other form, key value store? Is it just sitting there or are you actually getting that data moving yeah. so that you can actually teach using that data, those new, those models, and they can be up to date because the, the key to any data creation isn't that you're creating the data. It's how quickly and how available is it to the other applications downstream to be used effectively? Yeah. So again, it's like you create data and you leave it in a storage device. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't inform the, the enterprise that doesn't create an opportunity to use it to learn new things. And again, I think the key element to this is time. Yeah. So there was a time when years ago, there was no such thing as a data lake or a data warehouse or an enterprise data warehouse. It's an operational database. All those analytic platforms have emerged because the business has said, we need to learn more about our data. And then guess what's happened over the last 10 years, the compression of time and yeah. yes, the real time enterprise. So again, where event store comes in is we, 
sit at the origination of the data, an event native database. Yeah. So we'll curate that data. We log it so we know every bit that's come in, when and why it happened. And then we can serve it to downstream applications and analytic workloads, as well as AI learning models via our streaming engine. So we think it's a, a super important time that people are thinking about doing it this way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think it's always uh, super cool when you answer a question that I haven't even asked yet, which <laughs> that was that was the next thing that was the next thing I was going to explore. And I know this is a differentiator, this, you know, event store being an event native data platform company and, and that this, you know, this I do think is the evolution, you know, part of the evolution of modern data platforms. Anything else to add on that front? Yeah, I, I would just say, and again, this is uh, this is not a knock on the traditional data platforms that are today in the operational area, but those those platforms, because of kind of the expense of, well, the issue of Moore's Law, storage is expensive, memory is expensive, CPU is expensive. When they were invented 40 years ago, when it all started, uh, it was basically you stored the latest state, which yeah. meant you wrote over the previous state. You just yeah. would write over it. Well, we know there's been tremendous numbers of uh, ways to get around that, like change data capture companies, et cetera, to capture the timeliness of what actually occurred prior. Well, we built a, a product from scratch that actually logs every activity from origin. So it's native to us to capture everything in the system. And we think that's absolutely instrumental to what how you would want to use a data downstream and in the future. So that's kind of a, a fundamental uh, what I would say, variation on the operational database theme that we've added. Got it. So what do you see specific to Event Store that differentiates Event Store as a data pl platform solution? Well, again, I think it goes that there, when you think about databases, there's kind of two key elements. There's the state, which is the value of whatever is written. And then there's the log, which is the, you might call it the resolution on what was written. Yeah. What what an event architecture does is it considers the log as kind of the most important part because that's the how and the why. The state is whatever it is. Like if you think about a marital name change from Smith to Jones, okay, it's great. That happened. Did it happen a week ago? Did it happen a year ago? Did it happen 20 years ago? Yeah. Did it? Was it a different name even before that? And in many cases, when companies want to go back and do analytics and really understand whether it's a customer, a trading environment, you know, a manufacturing situation, they want to have a full history of everything that's ever happened. And we, again, we develop that and offer that natively from the beginning. So you'll have the ability to always go back. Secondly, again, I mentioned that putting data in a data repository is great, but we believe that your ability to stream natively out of that database two downstream applications, two analytic workload applications, two AI models is critical. So originating it and then moving it is really at the heart of what Event Store does. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think that sometimes when I think about this and I'm, you know, trying to give the most simple explanation of how this kind of solution works, I think about Uber and I think about, you know, Uber's not a new company. They've been around for a long time. And I think it's a great example of, you know, think about all the individual events that Uber has to connect mm -hmm. in order to serve its customer base and how mm -hmm. quickly it does that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no time mm -hmm. to wait. There's no time for that data to be resting somewhere that's inaccessible. And so I think that when you can take that example of, you know, you you need to use Uber, you pick up your device, you, you know, you call an Uber, it tracks you, all the things that Uber does, the payments part of it, all of that sort of thing. And, you know, and, and they continue to evolve and expand mm -hmm. their capabilities on a, on a regular basis. But then when you extrapolate that out to other high stakes use cases in industries, you know, finance, oil and gas, healthcare, manufacturing, you know, and you think about all of the things that need to happen quickly in those environments, I think that that to me um, really helps demonstrate the importance of mm -hmm. solutions like this. Well, you're hitting on something that's actually instrumental too. And in the good old days, when applications were vertically integrated, you would be inside of an enterprise and you would build the application and it would serve only your 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 organization, your company. Yeah. The Uber example is a good one because now applications are inside and outside of an organization. They're yeah. loosely coupled. 
So for example, Uber Eats. So Uber doesn't manage the pizza place that the person goes and picks up the pizza from, right. but somehow they're able to integrate data and send information uh, based on the requirement. Now, for example, uh, if I go and I order a pizza through Uber Eats, there's, this, there's an event called an order. Well, all of a sudden now there's an event tracking thing that happens where I'm getting updates. Well, that's an integration between the pizza parlor, Uber, the driver, and me. Well, all of that stuff has to get integrated. And, and the way it gets done is every one of those actions is a series of events. Right. And what Event Store does is we string those events together to tell a comprehensive story from order to delivery of how that works. Now, to magnify that a little bit, uh, and we could really dive deep into the world of uh, enterprise application development, but with a modern uh, application environment around microservices, that is evolved because people are realizing it's easier to build a bunch of microservices and string them together than it, right. is, to, than it is to build this monolithic application. Well, guess what? Each one of those microservices communicate to other microservices in this loosely coupled event driven way. It's yeah. each service sends other data to each other service. Well, what's critical to that? There's a transmission layer between services. So we believe that if you're originating data and you're transmitting it between microservices, that's another very, very important part of where Event Store plays. Yeah. So it that's kind of a, 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 a I guess a deeper dive on your Uber example is that yeah. there's all these things connecting that are inside your operation and your enterprise, and some are not, they're outside. And you have to make sure it all works to deliver that pizza from order to that customer. Everybody's happy. Everybody gets paid. Everybody's informed. Well, looks, and, really, looks really simple. Not that simple. <laughs> not that simple. Well, and, and it has to be efficient and it has to be fast. I mean, those are yeah. the other parts of the equation that, you know, when we are talking about, especially serving customers in those final moments of experiences, you know, customers are patient. They're not going to sit around. You got to make it all happen really, really fast. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, that's part well, of the I, challenge. Well, yeah. it is. And you think about like Uber's not a customer of ours, at least they may be an open source user of our product. I should probably yeah. look into that, but you know, you're hitting on the right point. Imagine we're standing in an airport and we're watching, where is our car? Right. Like, when will it be here? Two minutes, it's two miles away. So we're constantly wanting to know and be updated. Yeah. Well, guess what? Every one of those updates is an event. Yeah. And every one of those events needs to get logged. And every one of those events that gets logged is available for Uber or any other enterprise to be able to go back and understand how the business is performing, what right. they could do better, what could be different. So the historical element of this is super, well, the real-time element is super important to deliver good service. Yeah. The historical element is super important to do analytics on it to figure out how to improve service. Right. So you right. see it works from origin yeah. and all the way through. That all works together. Well, yeah. part of your announcements, Kirk, this week were around the enhancements made to Event Store Cloud. I know they mm -hmm. include, you know, streamlining management, improving ease of use. They're designed to <laughs> help customers increase time to value. We just talked about that a little bit. Walk me through, if you would, some of those enhancements that you announced. So a big kind of corporate value for us is to be a company that's easy to do business with. Okay. So we want there to be as, as little friction in when you engage with the event store as possible. And so we have dramatically streamlined how our cloud sign on operates. So it's much, much faster than it was before. Okay. We've also added the ability to use uh, AWS uh, marketplace credits. So you can buy event store by using your AWS marketplace credits. Right. Um, and we've we've added a number of other features that become very, very important. We have two platforms. One is an on-prem platform, you know, bring your own cloud or do it in ours. Right. And then, you know, obviously this piece, which is a pure SaaS play, is for those that want to be able to just swipe their credit card, which is a new feature we've just added as well. Like swipe that. your credit card and start using Event Store. So, yeah, we're super excited about the uh, about the opportunity going forward with that product. 
Well, and I think to me, a couple of things that were very attractive were the fact that, you know, customers can stand up instances in minutes because mm -hmm. you've got automated provisioning happening there. And then, you know, today, I think at a time when everybody's laser focused on cost, I think really being able to allow customers the ability to, to control their spend by resizing clusters dynamically, I think, mm -hmm. I think those are big parts of the value prop. Those are really big. Yeah. And those are new. Thank you for bringing those up. Those are new enhancements to the, yeah. uh, to the product, yeah. which our customers have been asking for. So yeah. yeah, we're thrilled. We're thrilled about that. And we've got a, a very good base of customers and they, you know, a very, very high renewal rate. So we're very thrilled by that. We think this is going to attract a lot more companies because again, the, the sign on and getting into production will be faster. And then the flexibility of managing and as you say, resizing your cluster, up yeah. or down will be, you know, will be much more simple. So yeah, we're excited to see where this goes. Well, and I, I will also would be remiss to add, I cover the cybersecurity sector as well. And I noted that you've got some enhanced security and management capabilities, MFA, um, detailed audit logs to track everything. I mean, yep. that is to me, <laughs> that is table stakes as well. So some really cool stuff. Yep. Um, now, what you're doing with the fully managed event store DB cluster seems very appealing, and I imagine it will be to developers as well. Will you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. So um, basically what we're allowing is multiple deployment uh, methodologies. So you can okay. deploy in your own cloud, you can deploy in a cloud managed by us, or you can then go in through the SaaS offering as well. Yeah. And so Thank it kind of depends on how you want to do it. You know, these days... You know, in the in the early days at Cloudera, I mean, the company was called Cloudera, but nobody wanted to deploy in a cloud at the time because it was they were nervous about putting their yeah. data in somebody else's instance. Well, now horses out of the barn on that one. Everybody's building to the cloud. We still though see people that want a different deployment mo mo model, and in some cases, the same company might want multiple deployment models depending on the application, depending on the division, depending on the user. So our goal is to give customers as many ways to deploy the product as they can. Yeah. You know, choice. Isn't that an yeah. attractive thing? <laughs> well, you touched on this choice earlier. Choice. You, know, you could give too many choices and then that's true. Different that's challenge. true. I, I, I will confess that I have been to the cheesecake factory maybe two times in my entire life. And largely it was, you know, because somebody else forced me to go there. No offense, cheesecake factory fans. And right. um, it's just not really my kind of place, but I think about too many menu options. And I think about a cheesecake factory menu. It's like, I can't possibly pick. There's too many. So, totally, um, yeah. Well, you mentioned this earlier, but I do want to just touch on it again. You know, you, you mentioned that Event Store Cloud is available in the AWS marketplace. This integration is huge in my world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, you touched on this before. Customers can leverage their existing AWS credits and the contracts they already have in place. And all of this, I think, is really designed to help spur spur adoption, make it easy, right? There's a streamlined yep. path to, um, you know, to be able to utilizing this. And, you know, one of the, I think the key parts of this value proposition is that, you know, this allows customers to focus on building valuable products rather than, you know, thinking about managing infrastructure. That consolidated yep. billing is huge. And then of course you've got AWS's infrastructure that allows for low latency access and, to, you know, I think all of those things together make this a really exciting announcement for customers, you know? Yeah. You, all, you know, it's interesting too, part of the ease of use, and listen, I think this goes without saying, but, you know, a product-led growth strategy for a company is also good. I mean, yeah. the product is based on, our, on an open source artifact that was uh, put together by the company years back. But again, and that's one way to do it. The other way is give people the ability to come online, sign on easily, swipe their yeah. credit card and try it. Yes. You know, if they like it, they'll stick around and then, you know, they'll call us up and want to do more. Yeah. And so we want to make that kind of opportunity to work with the product uh, frictionless. And so yeah. we think this is going to really have a big impact on our top line. Yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of this in the market, Kirk, and I think it's just a really smart strategy. And, you know, there have been so many times, for instance, when someone has come to me and said, oh, we've got a new blah, 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 you know, we'll give you a free trial. Don't you want to do this? And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that process can be as time consuming and cumbersome as, you know, choosing not to. So I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of making it easy to give people an opportunity at a very low risk and low investment 
um, to yep. get in, play around, see what it's all about, see what you can do. Um, and then, like you said, decide, oh, this is for me. And so I think that to me, that model is so much more attractive and so much less time intensive um, than mm -hmm. sort of the other older way of doing things that many of us have trudged through in the past. Yeah. Well, and again, I mean, you use the, we're using the term event as the denominator of what we do. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about a database, typically databases, you think about it, it's, well, it's relational or it's key value store right. or it's columnar or it's something, it's graph. And we're talking about an event database. And so there are those that will want to come in and poke around and figure out how they actually could use this. In addition, with the streaming capability where you can actually set up streams and projections, it's a pretty powerful platform. It's going to be fun for us to allow people to come in and dabble to the degree they want to. And then they'll discover it on their own, which is yeah. part of the PLG motion that uh, yeah. we've sort of enjoyed up to this point because yeah. the product has been out. But now that we've refined and improved the platform, we think it's going to really take off. So yeah. we're excited to see how it goes. Well, that's awesome. So it's been an exciting week for you, for Event Store. What, when you think about, you know, the next handful of months, the next 90 days, 60 days next year, what are you most excited about in terms of what's ahead, Kirk? Well, I would say that uh, in the next six months, we're going to announce more product offerings than we've had in the previous 18 months. And that's attributed to the team that we have here and the hard work and also the commitment that the team has to the vision of the company, which is yeah. we believe that, you know, thinking about data in the form of an event uh, is a super important element. Confluent, yeah. which is kind of is a streaming, you know, behemoth and has kind of dominated that world in the world of Kafka, was the first one on the scene to kind of make the event the first class citizen. Yeah. And so we're parlaying a little of what they do. We're, we're on more on the database side than on the streaming side, although we have streaming capability in our product, but we actually think this is going to be a first class conversation going forward. In, in, in addition, if you think about the three areas of data platform, the operational database, which is the origination of data, typically uh, the data streaming piece. Some people used to call it the ESB enterprise service bus and all those other ones. And that's yeah. in that middle category. And then the other one that is absolutely exploding that I know Shelly, you know a lot about is the data analytics space, right? You know, data lakes, et cetera. Well, that those three elements have to work better together. They're still somewhat stove piped. Each one has its own fiefdom. Uh, Confluent has, has done a great job of kind of bridging origination of data to the analytics of data. We think we're going to come in and enhance that as well. And when you start thinking about what we're talking about, which is time and real-time enterprise, we don't have time to have these kind of I I impedance barriers between yeah. operational database to the analytic database. When you start thinking about AI, the those models are only as good as the currency of that data. That's right. And if that data isn't really current and able to get to quickly, well, then that model is only as good as that data. And, yeah. and we know time is the killer in that situation. So yeah. we think we're going to have a big impact and and are really looking forward to, to contributing to how enterprises build their data yeah. platforms out. Well, exciting stuff. All right, I'm gonna wrap this show, Kirk, and I'm just going to ask you to leave me with one piece of advice, you know, in, in, in your work, you know, in your advisory capacity, in your work dealing with customers, um, you know, what's one piece of advice you want to leave our audience with as they're thinking about the challenge of getting arms around data, data management, and, and being able to access data in the way that's really going to fuel the this next iteration of business? Yeah, and I would say, and I, would, I appreciate that. I would say what I kind of said was that, you know, the data platform grew up kind of in a series of sequences, yeah. data origination under an operational database. Then we started realizing we needed to move data between applications and to other 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 places, and then we decided that it needed to be we needed to have analytic workloads and the data warehouse and enterprise data warehouse all came together. I think one of the things that we need to do is step back from all that and look at it holistically. Don't look at it as an operational database. Don't look at it as a streaming platform. Don't only look at it as an analytic outcome. Look at that workflow as a business would look at it. A business would say, I'm originating data here. 
I'm moving it to other applications for other uses like inventory control, right. customer service, and then I'm analyzing it so that I can think about how I run that business better. So it is not just an operational database. It's not just a streaming platform. It is not just an analytic thing. Right. I think <laughs> we need to look at this thing holistically and see yeah. how they all play together. And again, the key element is play together with time being the precious resource. Yeah, absolutely. Well, perfect advice. Kirk Dunn, CEO of Event Store. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited about what you, David Wang, and the team are doing in the future ahead. Looks very bright. To Thank our you. listening and viewing audience, I'm your host, Shelly Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Cube and keep it here, your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. We'll see you next time.